Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I am not very excited to do. I'm going to be talking about all of the worst makeup that I tried in, in 2019. I have a bunch of these wrap-up videos. I will leave them in my description box down below. I have Best of Beauty, both drugstore and high-end. I have flops of 2019. I have ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes, all 43, that I tried in 2019. So again, all those videos will be listed in my description box if you want to check out any more of these. But like I said, today's video, I'm going over all of the worst products that I tried last year. So if you want to hear about those, why don't we go ahead and get started. I did want to say quickly that I did film some of this look over on my Instagram uh, with this eye look using two of the new palettes that I picked up recently from Fenty Beauty. So a March Beauty Word over on Instagram. I will have the tutorial linked in my description box as well if you want to see how I got this eye look. But jumping into it, let me consult my notes. Whoo! So I always have a lot of fun going back through all my old videos. And when I saw the thumbnail for this particular video pop up, I was like, oh yes, I do remember trying that product. Does anyone remember, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but does anyone remember the Revlon Cheek Maker? I tried this, my YouTube video at the time of filming says 10 months ago. It's this thing that you held in your hands and the product was separate it into a blush and into a highlighter and it was a cream product and so you were supposed to be able to set it on your face and then just like whoop like that's what the videos did like it was just like someone set it on their face and whoop and they have blush and highlight and boom like they're already walking out the door like the dust is already behind them because they have already left the building and I was like this isn't gonna work but I tried it anyways and no it didn't work it was it was it was very confusing and I understand like it could make for a fine cream product if you either were you know dipping your fingers in and patting it on or a brush in or a sponge or whatever it may be and dipping it on but the point of this was that it was supposed to be like quick like on the go like literally one swipe you have two different makeup products on now and then you can just go ahead and get on with your day and I didn't really see that happening. So that product ran for $11 and while it was fun to try and while it was fun to try to like make a face for that YouTube thumbnail video, I didn't think that product was any good. Next up I have two different concealers to talk about. I love trying concealers. I love trying complexion products and foundations and all of that, but I'm also extremely particular when it comes to concealer, especially like, yes, I'm picky with other parts of my makeup and I'm particular about foundations and I have a, a specific type that I lean towards. Concealers, for some reason, I really am super particular about and there's really only a select few like in my little makeup organizer there is only a few that I have that I have pulled out that stays on my bookshelf that I see every single day that are like my top top favorites and like I said I have two different fails from 2019 one is from a Fenty Beauty this is their retouch concealer I have the shade 170 this ran for $26 just a very drying concealer I mean you get a lot of coverage with this one but if you don't like something that's more on the dry side for your concealer you would not like this one from Fenty it just felt too thick it felt too hard to blend out for me I prefer something Thing that does give me good coverage but is also more hydrating is easier to blend out and is more lightweight on the under eyes the skin is so thin under your eyes and when I have to pull and tug that's just not something that I want to be a part of so unfortunately that's why the Fenty didn't work for me and kind of really right along the same lines there is this one from Benefit this is the Boing Cakeless Concealer uh, first of all, super cute packaging. Um, I did get the Revlon sent to me in PR, the Fenty. I did purchase myself the Benefit. I, um, was also sent over in PR. Really, really liked this packaging. I thought that this was super cute. And I was excited to try this one out, but this did not work well for me. I used it for the first time on camera. And I was also using a sponge that Benefit sent over that looked like, like it looked kind of like a pencil eraser. I don't, I don't know. It was cute. Or was it a watermelon? Those are two extremely different things, but I have both in my mind. I have no idea why. 
but it was something like that. It was very small and it wasn't a good sponge. Like when I wet the sponge, I was like, okay, this is not gonna work out for me. Like, what are we going to do here? And as I started to try to blend out the concealer, I was like, this is not going well. I was showing close-ups. I was like, my skin does not look good. Like, what, what is happening here? And I blamed it on the sponge. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try the concealer again. And actually, some people did comment in that video and said, like, this is one of your favorite concealers. And, you know, try it again and you'll love it. And every time I've used it, again, I just think that it's too thick. I think that it's too drying. I don't think it blends out well. I don't think the coverage is there. I think that it, it accentuates all of my lines and under here if I do have any dry patches on my under eyes you're gonna see it when I use this concealer and I just don't like this one at all so unfortunately those are two concealers that were a big mess for me so another product that I tried in 2019 that I really did not get on it with was a highlighter from Too Faced this came out in their pretty rich collection and I was really excited about this collection I got the entire thing in PR which I was so excited for because I wanted to pick up the the palette for myself and I was super disappointed in kind of a lot in the collection but especially these highlighters these beautiful over-the-top highlighters they had just the crazy packaging on them this big old box that you would open up and then it looked like you were like opening up a jewelry box and this beautiful really big highlight sat in there and these were 36 dollar highlights the, that is that's very expensive for a highlighter uh so i was just thinking these are going to be the most fantastic highlighters that i've ever tried it was so hard to get the highlighter to show up on me. And I'm someone, I do like a little bit more of an intense highlighter most days. I tend to prefer beaming highlights. And especially when I'm going to be paying such a high price point for something like a highlighter, I really want it to have an oomph. I really want it to show up. Uh, I really want to make it seem worth the price tag I guess and that one from Too Faced I just really couldn't get on with them not only again with this over the top packaging it did make it kind of bulky it made it kind of hard to store in my makeup collection and all of that but then at the same time for it to barely even show up on my skin I was super disappointed in that and kind of along those same lines this is like really one of my least favorite products that I tried throughout the year I was I was like, I was so mad at this product. I can remember also making a thumbnail for this <laughs> for this particular video where I was trying out the MAC Affleur Real highlighter and just being like, because that thing was not good. And even as I've been planning to make this video, going back through all my old videos, doing research to find, did these really come out in 2019? Because I totally had a 2018 release that I put in my flops of 2019 video but it was a re-release in 2019 i think that's where i got confused but finding the prices you know all of that i happened to find a, a bunch of the reviews for this a fuller real highlighter from mac and i don't think i saw anyone give it over like a 2.5 star review it just did not do well so this was from mac cosmetics and it was at such a beautiful looking highlighter when the promo photos came out i was like that thing is gorgeous i remember people tagging me i remember people being so excited and just saying like look how like beautifully stunning this highlight is and really a bunch of the highlight was just an overspray uh when you would like run your finger along it it just it it's really bringing up some bad memories for me right now. I was just super disappointed in this highlight. I know a lot of people were and really even once you got past the overspray part and you would actually put it on, it really wasn't a highlight. And then there was some confusion of is it a highlight or is it actually a blush or a blush topper or a it had very little pigment to it, it had very little payoff to it. Just it was that was oof. 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 That was a disappointment. I also had a couple glosses that I just could not get on with. 2019 was really the year where I started to wear gloss more. I used to be, mm, I don't know if I want to say anti-gloss because I would still try glosses now and again. And if I like hyped a lip gloss came out, like I would buy it even though I was like, I don't like lip gloss. Why am I doing this? I don't know. <laughs> the questions we ask ourselves with our makeup purchases sometimes. But 2019 was when I finally was like, oh, I do like lip gloss and I started wearing it more, buying it more, trying different formulas. But there were some different glosses that I tried throughout the year that I really did not enjoy. One was from Juvia's Place. 
they actually sent over the collaboration that they did with Fumi and they had a lip gloss in there and that was my first time trying the Juvia's Place lip gloss formula and I was not a fan at all these run for ten dollars on the Juvia's Place website but that lip gloss was so sticky and so like lip sticking together kind of thing and even when you put it on you could tell it was like just this like thick drop like almost like the word that comes to my mind is dry like a dry gloss I don't it I I didn't like that one and I know I still have it but I couldn't find it I was looking in my office for it which I am in the process of like remodeling my offices and I have a lovely amazing intern who comes to my house a couple days a week and we worked so hard on my filming room today and cleaning things up that when what happens when I clean things is that I lose things because otherwise if they're just strewn about I I know where they are and I can see them but that, I mean that shows that I, I didn't even miss it even though I couldn't find it so really wasn't a fan of the Juvia's Place at lip gloss and then also I might be in the minority here but the ColourPop So Juicy glosses I'm not a fan of I I don't like these so these say they're the plumping glosses they have a bunch of different shades out they come out with new ones in like the big collections that ColourPop comes out with and to be honest ColourPop doesn't have my favorite lip products which is ironic because I'm wearing two ColourPop lip products on my lips right now I have the Beeper lip liner on, which that is the exception. I do really like ColourPop lip liners. And then I have one of their, um, it's right next to me. This is Electric Feel, one of their matte, I think it's like the Velvet Blur lipsticks. But apart from the ColourPop lip liners, I, I'm not, like I don't really lose my mind over their lip products. Like the lippy sticks, the Velvet Blurs, the regular lip glosses, the So Juicy lip glosses. Their, I mean their mattes, their ultra mattes ultra glossies like I don't know besides the lip liners which I I buy I buy so many lip liners but everything else I'm just not really a fan of when it comes to their lips I, I of course I like so many other products from them and their eyeshadows and their cheek products I think are really good I have a blush on from ColourPop today that I really do enjoy but I don't, something about the so juicy formula the first time I tried it I was like what do I know how to apply lip gloss because it was like this weird like it would like goop in like the like the corners of your lips though you know and it was weird like I'd open my mouth and you'd see the lip gloss like yawn with me and I'm like wait what how why why is this happening and people were commenting like you're using too much lip gloss and I'm like ah okay and so I would try to like use less and then people were like you have to use your fingers and I'm like oh I hate using my fingers but fine and I'd be dabbing my finger on this thing and like so lightly trying to just like tap the smallest amount on my lips I don't like this I and I'm, and I'm sorry I color props one of my favorite brands they put out fantastic products for great prices but when I don't like something I'll tell you I don't like something and I really don't like this lip gloss mascara that I'm super disappointed that I didn't like because a waterproof formula was released in 2019 and I really liked the regular version of this mascara but the waterproof was super disappointing this is from Urban Decay this is their perversion waterproof mascara I really do like the perversion mascara from Urban Decay I've gone through several both uh, full size and minis. I think it's a great mascara and so when they released the waterproof I was like cool because the one con of the perversion is that sometimes after like several hours of wear you can start to get transfer or a little bit of smudging so you know if you're wearing it for a super long time you just kind of have to be careful of that and so when I when they released the waterproof I was like oh maybe that will help with the with the transferring issue and it'll just be like a fantastic mascara like this is going to be a favorite mascara of mine I had it sent over from Urban Decay I like the like the tube um, it has you know like the water droplets on it like super cute really enjoy it you know when I pull it out the wand looks I mean the same as the perversion wand but the form like this this is a mascara that I put on my lashes and I see no difference it was like nothing happened it's like I put on invisible mascara I don't want an invisible mascara I want my lashes to look more lengthened and fuller and maybe even add a little bit of black to them so they stand out a little bit more because I kind of have like lighter lashes does that make any sense okay it's funny because on the back it says bigger blacker batter batter that's what I got out of this mascara 
better. 2019, especially kind of like the second half of 2019, a ton of foundations released. I tried so many new foundations. I bought so many new foundations for a review. I reviewed and even ranked so many foundations. But there was one foundation that really stuck out to me as being my least favorite. And this is from Rimmel and this was their Stay Matte Foundation. I think this was like a re-release or a re-promote but in like different packaging it came in like a purple squeeze tube type of packaging i'm gonna have a photo on the screen so i don't really know why i try to describe things to you but uh i got it and i was reading about it i got it sent from rimmel i was reading about it and i read like you know full coverage and mattifying and i was like probably not gonna like it because uh, especially for the majority of 2019 just like matte full coverage wasn't really my thing i typically have very dry skin i've moved over into a little bit more oily combo at this moment but through most of the year i was still very dry i was looking for either hydrating foundations or foundations with a luminous finish a satin finish uh, i really like natural finish foundations instead of very matte uh, I kind of like a medium is kind of my sweet spot, but you also never like I, I try to still stay a little bit open minded because sometimes you can find foundations that at least in my experience, you can find foundations that you didn't think that you would love because they sound different than the claims that you prefer, but you actually end up really getting on with it. So when I got this sent over from Rimmel, I was like, okay, I'll try it. And I went to try it for the first time filming an Instagram tutorial. I had my sponge because I also re like sent over a Rimmel sponge with the package. And I have the foundation and I'm like, ooh, look what I'm going to put on my face today. You know, like you have to do for Instagram videos. Otherwise, like no one watches them. I, why that is, I have no idea. But I'm doing that. And I'm like doing this dance and everything's going to be great. And then I go to squeeze the foundation onto the sponge and like this thick large goop comes down from the bottle and just like plop on the sponge and I was like oh no this is not gonna end well is it and I do not know why I should have just stopped I should have just stopped right there I should have just stopped and not tried anymore but I was like this will be fine and so I'm I'm still got the camera rolling and I'm trying and I'm trying so hard to blend it onto my face it looked it looked it looked really bad <laughs> it looked it looked really bad I mean it, again I'm sure there's people who enjoy this foundation because our preferences are so different especially when it comes to foundation especially when it comes to our skin types and what we want to look like when we put makeup on everyone's different in that sense so I'm sure that there's people who I'm talking about your favorite products in this video and you probably hate me for it but gotta be honest but it was just too thick it was too full coverage it was too matte it didn't look good on my skin it didn't look good in the way that I want my makeup to look it didn't feel good it was so heavy and it just looked like I was wearing so much makeup even if I just had one thick goop that came out on my sponge Ooh, I was I was just I was just not a fan of that one. Mm -mm. I have one final product left to talk about. This is a lip liner. This is from Dose of Colors. I picked up the shade Undressed. I purchased this from Ulta. It was $14. I was really disappointed in this lip liner because I'm a big fan of Dose of Colors and I'm a big fan of their lip products especially. That's how I really got started with the brand. Uh, I've bought and purchased so many of their lip products and they're just some of my favorites. So when they released the lip liners, I was like, yes I'm going to buy those and it's going to be great it's going to be awesome I almost bought like three shades right off the bat I like I don't know why I don't know what I was thinking I think it was just because I couldn't decide on a shade like hmm, the problems we have but I was like okay no just go with one just make sure you like it the first time that I used this I was like oh I really like it you know things are going well I like the shade it's just a nude I mean it's called undressed it's just a nude but it was one of those that was kind of like a good sweet spot for lip liners where it wasn't super creamy where sometimes super creamy lip liners can kind of move around or they just don't stay in place as well but it wasn't super tuggy on my lips I was like okay this is gonna go well I remember the first time wearing it I wore it to a concert that night with some lip gloss and I felt like the lip liner held up so well I was like this is fantastic Flash forward to the third time that I try using this lip liner and it is oh, like so dried out. I'm like tug like I'm like tugging and pulling on my lips and I'm like, what is going on here? And pretty much after that time, it's 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 truly not even usable to me. I have so much product left because I really didn't use it that much, but I can't get 
I can't, it's just, it's just dried out. And that's such a bummer to me, especially because it has this little cap here. I've always had the cap on it. I don't know why it dried out so quickly, but that just really bummed me out. So, I mean, yeah, I got two good uses out of it, I guess, but is that really worth $14 when I can continually repurchase the ones from ColourPop that are like, what are these, like five or six dollars or something, and use them so often and use them all the way up? Like, that was a big disappointment for me. I wasn't, wasn't a fan of these lip liners from Dose of Colors. All right guys, that is going to do it for me and today's video talking about the worst makeup that I tried in 2019. And of course, throughout the year of trying and reviewing makeup, there's so much that I did try that I just didn't really like or didn't really work for me, but I still thought maybe it was an okay product. And I didn't include those in here. One, I, you know, I don't wanna make this video too long talking about negative things. Ugh, that's not really a good time for me. I like to put my positive, well today I have my positive sweatpants on, but, um, you know, I usually like to keep my positive pants on, but it is what it is, and when you're a reviewer, you do also have to talk about the bad along with the good, but I also wanted to touch on, like, really, like, my top makeup fails, products that I just don't think were a good product, um, you know, a, a lot of them, too, are, you know, are based on my preferences, but also just makeup that I just really wouldn't be able to recommend to other people. So again, I'll have a bunch of my 2019 wrap-up videos in the description box if you want to check out some more of those. Again, this Instagram tutorial will also be linked down there. Let me know what were some of your least favorite products, some of your makeup fails that you tried in 2019. I, of course, would love to know. But other than that, if you guys did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go, and I will see you in my next video.